So today's podcast, we're going to talk about all things gym, whether you are a beginner or an advanced liver. I'm going to uh, advanced liver, <laughs> advanced lifter, of course. Um, hopefully you don't have an advanced liver. Uh, I'm going to answer some of your frequently asked questions that people typically just ask me in day to day life or maybe when they're specifically working out and training with me, they'll ask these things. We're going to talk about being lost at the gym when you are first starting, how to start a walking program to lose weight. We're going to talk about having foot pain and neuropathy when doing exercise and walking and how you can go about that. And even talk about free weights versus machines. We're going to have a lot of different discussions. That's not everything. We got a lot more. If you are joining me live please consider liking the video or if you're just watching this on the replay also consider liking the video it helps spread inclusive fitness and health to individuals of all abilities let's go ahead and jump right into addressing some of these frequently asked questions and the first question that i really wanted to talk about because i think it's one of the most important things that people who are first starting out in the gym struggle with and deal with is simply not knowing what to do when they're going to the gym so um, hopefully this gives you some gentle guidance and gives you a few ideas. You know, you don't have to take all of these things, but I think a few of these things can be a very, very good um, idea, basically ideas and tools that you can use for your implementation into your gym routine. So I think one of the most important first parts of this is to define what your goals are. If you're lost in the gym, the first thing you need to do is simply say, hey, Am I trying to lose weight? Am I trying to gain strength? Am I trying to maybe just feel a little bit better? Maybe I don't have defined goals. I think if, especially if you reach into that last one and you don't have defined goals, it's incredibly important to find a goal for yourself. This will give you a lot of guidance on the type of things you should be doing in the gym and instead of having it be like, oh, there's all these exercises, all these things to do, it will give you a very um, basically rigid guideline of this is what we're gonna do and this is how we're gonna do it. So first starting out, define what your goals are. When it comes to goals too, I also wanna say you wanna pick goals that are going to be useful for you and also goals that you can do for yourself. Um, so a lot of times people will pick goals that they can't really do and they pick goals that are um, essentially for them maybe not even doable long term um, so you need to pick a goal that is realistic for yourself it challenges you a little bit but at the same time you want it to be not too hard so this is where it's going to take a little bit i would err on the edge of making a goal a little too easy to start and then kind of build off of it at um, later time. Once you actually find a goal for yourself, you can also decide why you want to go to the gym. So this is important because I think it uh, describes something where sometimes people just wanna to go to the gym because they think they need to go to the gym. And you need to decide if you are trying to optimize your overall fitness and health, get the most out of it, or if you're just getting started. And for a lot of people, when they're first starting out, you really don't need to go to the gym technically. Um, you can do a lot of things at home and we're going to address some of these in a little bit, but simply ask yourself, do you need a gym? Do you need to go to the gym? And it's an incredibly important thing because if you don't need to go to the gym or don't want to go to the gym, um, somebody who maybe wants to go to the gym could just be somebody who's trying to learn more about gym culture, learn how to use the machines. And if that's your case, this is a different story. Also, if you're somebody who's trying to like optimize your health and get the most out of it, you might wanna to go to the gym because there's a lot more tools there that you can use to improve your overall fitness capacity. But if you're not in any of those uh, terms, Going to the gym, especially when you're first starting out, can increase a lot of anxiety and a lot of helplessness around going to the gym uh, when you're first starting out, of course. So if you don't feel like you need to, you don't. There's nothing special about the gym. It's just got a lot of good tools and you can also meet some good people too. And this could be uh, one of the reasons you go is to get a little bit of socialization. 
Some things you can do if you do actually want to go to the gym, but you're still lost is look out for some resources. So um, YouTube is something that I think a lot of us are well familiar with at this point. You can use YouTube for literally everything. And this is especially true for the gym too. I would recommend using reputable sources. Uh, sometimes when you are getting on social media and such, there's maybe some like TikTok influencers where they're just doing crazy workouts and might not be giving much substance. So um, try to dig around, go to the channels, go to the people who uh, have a good track record, um, people who you can kind of relate to and feel comfortable watching this channel uh, on my YouTube channel is of course a great one. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, but there's many others out there too that can show you a lot of different things, how to use equipment, how to do different exercises, etc. All from the comfort of your home. You literally don't need to leave anywhere. You don't even have to spend any money to see how to navigate the gym. So that's one of the first things and basically using the internet period is going to be a great way to leverage your overall knowledge of the gym. In addition to this, a lot of you might have friends or family or just acquaintances who already consistently work out. If you are friendly with them and if you feel comfortable going with them and asking them a few things about the gym, hey, you just won the jackpot because they hopefully assuming that they've been in the fitness industry a while will be able to tell you exactly what you need to do to optimize results get the best bang for your buck how to work uh, certain machines and how to do certain exercises to get your desired fitness goals and fitness results we talked about earlier so if you have a friend who's currently in a fitness highly would recommend just asking them hey can you help me go to the gym? Help me show me a few workouts. They might even build you a little bit of a program. Um, if you can't do that, one of the other good things that you can do is to hire a personal trainer. And you might be thinking to yourself right now, Logan, I don't have enough money for a personal trainer. Well, that probably uh, for a lot of people is true. Personal training can be very expensive and for good reason, you're literally getting somebody to walk you through the workouts and do basically all the hard work of planning the workout, etc. And they're showing you everything. But with that said, usually at gyms when you first start out, and especially if you're a new member to a gym, which a lot of the people who are lost when going to the gym are a new member, they um, do offer these kind of free trial sessions typically, or even free personal training trial sessions for individuals. So. This could be something where it's like a one week trial. And guess what? If you sign up for that one week and you are honest with that personal trainer about your goals, they're gonna show you basically everything you need to get started. They're probably gonna show you really basic workout, might be five to eight, maybe 10 exercises if you're lucky. But when you're first starting out, that's all you need. Because we're trying to build some momentum, we're trying to build some knowledge and self-confidence. So the fact that maybe you don't know all the machines in the gym doesn't matter because we are lost and we are trying to get started. If you simply don't know what to do, getting started is going to be the best thing for you. And for a lot of people, these personal training sessions can be a really, really good first start. And you might actually find too, I'm not saying you would need to buy a personal trainer, but you might find that just having this extra source of accountability, this extra source of coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, will actually allow you to kind of sustain and be better on your fitness goals. So even though you might not have originally wanted to hire that personal trainer, uh, you might start trying to get it to afford in your overall budget because having that accountability, having that source of telling me what to do, at least before you become independent in your fitness and health goals, it can be incredibly crucial. In addition to this, um, something else that uh, I don't always do a lot anymore, I actually do this a lot, but not for the reason I'm gonna say, is to watch others at the gym. So myself personally, I do watch others at the gym 
and it's usually basically to see kind of what people are doing, what kind of crazy workouts people are up to, because believe it or not, I see some crazy stuff when I work out at the gym. The reason why I'm telling you to look around at the gym when you are first starting out and simply don't know what to do is to see literally what other people are doing, but not to judge them, it's to actually see, hey, that's a machine that I really want to use. And I'm noticing that that guy's using it. So obviously in a non-creeper way, you might glance a little bit and see kind of what the machine looks like when he's doing it. Uh, you might see how he's adjusting it. And this is something too where, especially if the way your gym set out, you could have uh, maybe a bunch of treadmills and then the treadmills are pointing toward the, the strength equipment. That is a really, really good way where you can just walk on the treadmill for 20 minutes and just kind of scour the gym and see what's out there. Not only that too, you might just want to dedicate one day going in and just walking around the gym and looking at all the different machines. You can read the little labels on them. At the same time, you can kind of look at people and see what they're doing on the machines or just different exercises with dumbbells and free weights. And this can give you a really, really good idea of all the different exercises out there. You might not even decide to do anything that day. That's totally okay. That's totally okay because remember, at the end of the day, we're just overwhelmed. And if we're lost and overwhelmed when going to the gym, we're trying to just build a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of self-efficacy, find something that we can start with because that's gonna be the most important thing. Once you find a few things that you can start with, making a basic plan is incredibly crucial. Uh, the one I have kind of outlined here in this video is uh, basically a treadmill warm up. Maybe you're going to walk 10 minutes on the treadmill, going to do three to five sets of bench press because that's an exercise that you had your personal trainer teach you or show you how to do. You might do one core exercise like a plank. And then after that, you might do a couple stretches you know how to do, uh, maybe from gym class or maybe from the videos you've watched on YouTube, and then hit the sauna and leave. We don't need to overthink it. We don't need to overthink it. We're not really trying to optimize our overall fitness when we're first starting out and we're overwhelmed. We're just trying to build some confidence because that confidence is what will ultimately sustain your long-term results. And as we know with fitness and health, the people who can adhere and stick to plans for essentially the rest of their life are the people who are going to really reap the benefits of overall exercise, fitness, and health. If you're finding value from this too, please consider liking the stream or if you're watching on the recording, go ahead and like it as well. It greatly helps spread the message of inclusive health to everyone. Also too, I wanted to give some uh, beginner options that might be a little bit easier than doing straight up free weights. Uh, machines, as I've discussed numerous times, these machines are uh, basically on a fixed plane so they allow you to do the exercises with almost no fault at all. Um, I hate to say dummy proof, but a lot of them are. You might also do some exercise classes. That could be another great idea to build some social connection and just have maybe another coach or another few set of eyes actually teach you how to do some movements. Cardio is super easy for beginners, especially treadmills, uh, bicycle, spin bikes, uh, rowing machines. Those are all pretty easy to just get on and just simply do them. You know, they don't really need much, uh, kind of along the same lines of machines, but everyone can hop on the elliptical, crank out 20 minutes, no problem, and you don't really need much form coaching. There's not really a lot of chance of risk of injury, and it's something that, again, will get you in the gym, will build some confidence so you can sustain long-term, ideally. Also, another thing, too, that I isn't really technically in the gym, but people forget about is just doing sports. You know, a lot of us, when we grew up, we did soccer, we did baseball, basketball. All of these things are great sources of physical activity that we can and sh still should be doing outside the gym. It doesn't particularly matter that you might not be in an organized sport. You can still go shoot hoops for a little bit. Practice that. Doesn't particularly matter. Uh, especially at the end of the day, if you're starting in the gym, you usually want to become fitter or healthier. Doing some sports is great because it's gonna provide not only uh, hopefully some social connection with the sport, 
but you're just going to be focusing on the sport itself instead of, oh, I gotta do the treadmill for 10 minutes. And a lot of people like that too. Um, also, last thing, you could implement some single joint free weights. So this could be something like a biceps curl. A lot of people know how to do that. Tricep kicks back. This might be doing some free weights, but it's very, very simple free weight exercises. Again, leverage YouTube, leverage online sources. My channel is a great one, but of course there's many others that will show you how to do a lot of these things and can just build some overall confidence when you're first starting out. And I wanna again go back to that idea. Adherence is the biggest thing. We're trying to get the ball rolling here, getting you started so then we can build some long term success. Important, important note. All right, so the next portion of this, um, how to start walking program to lose weight. So how should you start when you're just trying to lose weight? And a lot of people, when you are trying to lose weight, walking is one of the first things that people think of and is actually probably one of the most underrated tools that you can use to lose weight. I walk a lot of steps per day. Uh, I try to get 10,000, you know, not because they're inherently, you know, 10,000 is a magic number. It's just easy to remember. Um, and a lot of people try to do that. I do that on top of all my normal exercise and cardio. I just get steps. I just get walking in. So um, walking is incredibly potent. It can really add up quickly. And a lot of people, especially uh, bodybuilders who are known for being very, very lean, use walking, especially walking for a long portion of time to lose weight um, or maintain their weight. doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to kind of maintain and lightly gain weight right now. I still walk a lot because it's an easy way to monitor my overall calorie consumption. Uh, not consumption, but calorie burn. Um, so basically energy balance. So the first thing I would do if you are starting a walking program is to decide where you want to walk. And the reason because of this is because a lot of people will think that I want to do something, so I'm just going to do it. But if you don't think about all the back end logistics of, again, for starters, where you're going to walk, the chances of you actually sticking to that walking program to lose weight is going to be almost impossible long term. Because anytime there's conflicting scheduling, anytime there's issues in it, you're basically just going to not have that game plan set. So a few different ideas of where you can walk. Of course, the gym, uh, if you're lucky, your gym might actually have a walking track. In addition to treadmills, my gym is really, really nice um, and that I actually have a pretty decent walking track I can do, but not all people do have that. So if you're lucky enough to live in Florida or a place where there's decent weather year round, you can really bank on walking outside for the most part, assuming you get enough hydration and you're um, layering yourself well with either sunscreen or clothing so you're not getting burned. Um, also too, this is one that uh, not a lot of people remember, but mall walkers. You can literally walk the mall for days. And unfortunately, malls are kind of dying, so that might um not be an option in the next 10 to 15 years i'm hoping that malls at least stay around to some degree i think they're fun to go uh well <laughs> use as walking tracks for example um i like going and walking around the mall just for anything but people still do this my mall in my hometown i'll go there for um maybe looking at video games with my little brother or uh, i just want to get some mall food or something right need to get some presents around christmas time and there's people who literally wake up and will be there right at 8 a.m. ready when the mall opens to do their laps. It's pretty crazy, but it's a free place that you can go do walking. Um, not a lot of people will bring weights too, but I've seen people uh, walk with weights. Another great idea. Uh, community centers, if you don't have a gym, you might have a community center which has a gym in it. This could potentially be another option. And also doing it at home. This is not something that people think about. Obviously, you could get a treadmill at home. Uh, I personally do have a treadmill and think it's one of the best investments that you could make if you are trying to optimize your overall health, fitness, and weight loss because you can walk on that thing whenever. I do it when I'm writing notes. I do it when I'm taking phone calls. I get on that treadmill throughout. I do it sometimes when I'm eating or watching podcasts. I have it literally down in my home gym in front of a TV. Uh, so I can be kind of uh, pro productive, productive in multiple aspects of life. 
But this isn't what I'm referring to. Of course, you can get a treadmill. When you're walking around your home, you might be able to have a good path that you have where you can literally get maybe a minute of straight walking if you just designate that out. I have an area downstairs in uh, my basement um, that is kind of, it's a straight shot at one point and then it kind of circles back where I'm literally just able to do laps around it. The lap itself takes about 30 to 45 seconds depending on how quickly I'm going. But this is essentially uh, like doing laps at the community center or maybe even the mall. And literally looking at your home and seeing what little lap system can I make or also just practicing inefficiencies around your home. Um, your lap you might have to do is going all the way upstairs and then going all the way to the bottom stairs. That might be considered a quote unquote lap for you look at your home and dissect all the different ways you can walk around your home. Something I'll also do too is to literally um, basically make my day as inefficient as possible. So uh, if I know I have laundry that's on the top stairs and I have something that I need to do in my basement, I will go upstairs, do the laundry, come back down, and then go up and do something else, come back down, and then I will go downstairs, do that thing, come back down, and then you can literally, this will add so many steps if you just practice efficiencies, uh, inefficiencies throughout your day. So around your home, you can find a little track to do. It might not be big, it might not be crazy, but this will add up so much steps. Another thing you should do after you find out where you are going to walk for your weight loss routine is to outline your week and simply decide which days you are going to walk for your weight loss workout. So uh, a lot of people like the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three days a week, that's really easy to remember. Um, you can do either a morning or afternoon workout depending on which kind of works out best for your normal life. I usually try to get people, especially if they're doing any type of workout routine, to do it before work because after work you're not going to be very tired um, or excuse me you're not going to have a lot of energy you're usually going to be very tired and you're not going to be motivated to do it quite as much as you would if you came in a little bit fresher as in before you go to work so just something i highly recommend to people um have it the best time of day for you and that's going to differ widely for everyone because there might be some people who get off work and they're like, I'm ready, I'm actually energized. I've been thinking about getting that workout in all day. This was used to be me actually when I did work kind of a uh, later shift. I would get off work and think, you know, I'm ready to work out, let's do this. There's other people who get off work and this might be you where you're like, I'm, no, I'm sitting back, I'm gonna drink some beers, I'm gonna get some uh, TV on and that's it, I'm cashed and that's okay. Just know yourself and plan whichever time of the day works out the best for you. Um, another thing I really like doing with people is when they're outlining their week is to schedule transitions from when they are doing activities to when they could be walking. For example, we're talking about walking weight loss. So if you're on your way home from work, or maybe you go out to a weekly lunch or um, event with your friends and that event or work is on the way home from a park, it's on the way home from a gym. And basically what I'm trying to get at here is to plan the times you're out and about with the times you wanna work out. So have it kind of work into your transition time with your life, which makes it so much easier to adhere to. Um, Cause if you think about it, you know, if you have a gym that's literally on the way home from your work when you're driving home, would it make much more sense to just drive straight to the gym after your work or go home, um, get something to eat, get your clothes, start getting procrastinated. Now you have to drive all the way back to the gym. This just adds on a lot of different barriers that people are usually dealing with when they're trying to start any workout program and specifically when we're talking about this walking program as well. Also too, if you're finding value from this, please consider liking the video. I'd greatly appreciate it so much. And once you do that, um, you've got your week kind of outlined, you decided where you're going to do it. Um, addressing the barriers to exercise, uh, and in this case, getting your walking in, is incredibly crucial. You're trying to decide for yourself 
Uh, where am I going to fall off? Where is the potential issues going to lie in when I'm following this exercise program? So um, maybe one of your barriers is that you're completely exhausted after your days at work. Uh, maybe another barrier is you always forget to bring clothes to work to go work out after. Maybe you're just bored with your exercises. Or maybe you have an all or nothing mentality. This could be another barrier. An all or nothing mentality basically means that you go in and you don't feel like doing anything, so you don't do anything. Versus just doing a little bit of exercise to build some momentum and hopefully get you something. You believe that simply not doing any exercise is better than doing um, just a little bit of exercise because that workout's gonna be quote unquote wasted. This isn't true, but this could be another barrier for you. So looking at your life and defining which barriers are going to be the most uh, basically issue bringing up um, and trying to work through those barriers are going to be incredibly crucial for your long-term success. And these barriers are gonna be different for everyone. Um, I'll give you an example for myself. I know a barrier to getting to the gym. Uh, shocker, you know, a fitness professional has a barrier to the gym. No, it happens to everyone. A barrier for myself of getting to the gym is that sometimes I get distracted and I just think too much about uh, what's on my phone. So I'll pull up my phone, oh, I gotta do some stuff for my business, and then just 10 minutes later, I'm just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So because of this, I know this is a barrier for myself and this eats a lot of time. When I'm about to go to the gym, I usually have to put my phone either down in my pocket or completely out of sight so I can get myself focused to doing that thing. I'm trying to address that barrier before it becomes an even bigger barrier. And this might be actually a prime example for you as well. So some quick tips when getting started with your walking program, start with a very small amount. You can either do it in steps or minutes walked. So maybe right now you only walk 3000 steps a day. Okay, that's great. Let's try to just do another thousand every day. Maybe right now you only walk 10 minutes a day. Let's just add another 15 minutes a day, or let's go up to 15 minutes a day, I should say. And this is really easy because again, like we talked about in the last portion of this podcast, we're just trying to build some self-confidence, trying to build some momentum. So over time, you can kind of see for yourself that, hey, 15 minutes isn't too bad. I'm used to doing that right now. It doesn't take too much stress or anxiety to ultimately get myself motivated to do that. And now I can actually do more and more. And maybe you wanna start adding in some weight training. It's just kind of this never ending thing that uh, builds on itself over time. Another good tip that I always like to use is to walk with friends. This is great because it can increase socialization. You can catch up with people. Also, it brings in some accountability where if you know, hey, I'm walking with this person at 8 a.m. at this time, uh, you're not gonna let them down because you're gonna be there for them. Also, it can kind of help with boredom too. If you're bored, having somebody with you to kind of uh, embrace the suck with you is incredibly uh, insightful and very, very useful. Uh, something that I like to do is listen to books or music or podcasts. This is something, again, nothing crazy. A lot of people do this, but uh, if you're first starting out, uh, using these tools as leverage to get you to be able to do them for a very long time makes it very, very crucial for overall adherence. Um, something I talked about earlier too, practicing inefficiencies at home. So if you have a lot of chores, try to be as inefficient as possible. So uh, if you know you have a chore that you need to do upstairs, maybe you have three chores that you need to do upstairs. Go do one chore, come back downstairs, do something, go back upstairs, do the other chore, come back downstairs, do something, and then finish the last one. That literally adds up so many steps and so much walking into your weight loss routine over time. You'd be pleasantly surprised and pleasantly shocked. Um, in addition to this, uh, pairing meals with walking. This isn't something that a lot of people do, but I think it's something important to note and discuss. I usually walk on my treadmill when I'm eating a meal. And again, this isn't like a four course meal. Usually it's my quicker meals in the day, like a sandwich or maybe some yogurt and fruit, something that I can eat in my hands while I'm walking. But it's just pairing 
activities I know I'm gonna do, like eating with walking. Also, there's some good uh, blood glucose regulation too if you do walk and pair food together, so that's super crucial. Uh, and then pre-planning your day the next day is going to be probably one of the best things you can do as well. So maybe you wear your clothes to bed that you were going to wear for the next workout. Uh, the day after, you can put your water bottle right by your phone in the morning, maybe even put it on top of your phone. Just trying to find ways to set up your environment a little bit better to make it a little less uh, difficult for yourself to work through this overall routine. So hopefully that gives you some good guidance when first starting out your uh, walking program. The next part of this podcast we're gonna talk about is beginners and using free weights or machines. So should beginners use a free weight or machines at the gym? And we're gonna talk about some pros and cons of both of them. So free weights to start, uh, some of the pros are that free weights, I would say in my eyes, are more transferable to life. And when I say more transferable to life, doing a squat with a, uh, let's say, barbell on your back is going to be much more useful as in something that you can actually do in your normal life compared to doing a leg press machine. So when you actually squat or you're practicing squatting, that's a pattern that we do every single day. Every time we get up and out of a chair, you are literally practicing a squatting movement pattern. So if you practice that movement with a load, guess what? It's gonna help you get out of a chair better. It's going to help you, as I mentioned in the uh, next portion of this, potentially get better at athletics because we need to squat and get down in these positions very frequently, not only in our day-to-day -day lives, but of course, if you're in athletics, this is also very, very true as well. Another good pro of uh, free weights is that it works a lot of stabilizing muscles. So um, when you are, say, doing like a bench press, for example, you might notice that, oh my gosh, like I'm kind of shaking. This is working a lot of different muscles in uh, your body that are usually very small, but they help to stabilize that weight in position, which are often neglected when we're doing machine exercises. Also, and one of the things that, especially since I've been doing this for over 10 years now, I've been working out, um, free weights just add fun to the workouts. So there's just something that's rewarding about just trying to learn and get better at the movements, trying to learn how to back squat the best, trying to learn how to do a front squat, how to do a deadlift with these free weight variations. There's so many things out there and it can add a little bit of fun, a little bit of excitement if you've just typically done machines uh, your entire life. Some of the cons to free weights though, is that it's kind of hard to learn. So if you're a beginner, this might not be the easiest uh, thing for you to do. And I'd highly recommend, uh, especially if you are just starting out, to get somebody like a personal trainer or a coach to work with you because having that extra set of eyes can help uh, kind of ease some of the injury risk off of it. So it could be more dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but since it is so hard to learn, I would just recommend getting one of those coaches. Um, free personal training sessions usually do happen at gyms. We talked about that earlier in the podcast. You can try to get out like a free trial session. Um, also too, gym access sometimes gyms especially like 24-hour fitnesses um, planet fitnesses are actually now adding a lot more free weights like barbells and such uh, but some of these gyms don't have free weights so if you're trying to work free weights into your normal program uh, how are you gonna do that if your gym doesn't have it so uh, sometimes gym access can be an issue if you work at an apartment gym or maybe you are going to a hotel for example they might only have a couple machines they might not have uh, your full-blown normal workout equipment so this is just something to consider for yourself you might not always have free weights um, and another thing too um, that not a lot of people talk about is that it can increase ego lifting so ego lifting is basically when you're just trying to lift the most amount of weight and not really care about form and you're just trying to do it to show off to people and free weights can kind of increase this because usually it's done in an attempt to show other people how strong you are in that given free weight exercise. So um, this can be a con. Obviously, if you check your ego at the door, this isn't really an issue. But 
for a lot of people, um, they, they can't do that. So just something to consider. Uh, looking at machines. So machines are incredibly easy to learn. Um, you could literally go in on day one and just start doing the machine. There's not really much to learn at all other than, you know, the exercises you're feeling. It's very, very easy to do. And for a lot of people, it's a great first place to start. If you're a beginner, I would highly recommend just starting with some machines um, just to get acquainted with the gym in general. It's easy to track your progress because a lot of them have the pull pins where you can kind of see, oh, five pounds I did on this day and the next time I'm gonna do five more pounds. So pretty easy to uh, track your overall progress. Um, and then kind of similar to the last one, uh, this is actually a pro, most gyms have some type of machines and actually a lot of machines, uh, which is a really, really good thing if you're trying to be efficient with your workout. A machine is very hard to do wrong too. Uh, so when it comes to like injury risk, you're not really going to have a very high injury risk because those stabilizing muscles, as we talked about, aren't getting worked. So because of this, it's a little bit easier to do. And it basically forces you to do the movement the way it's supposed to be. They, it, there's no really other way to do it. Um, some of the cons, of course, is that it works the muscles and typically it doesn't work the movement. So as we described with the back squat, the back squat is a movement, a movement. Squatting is a movement that is crucial for everyday life. If you were to do a leg extension machine, which would work your quadricep muscles, which is a muscle that is worked in the back squat, you're gonna be working that muscle, which is great for overall strength of that muscle and getting it bigger, so hypertrophy, but you're not working the actual movement. So it kind of depends, you know, I'm not saying everyone needs to work movements. It's good to work both muscles and movements, but machines typically work the muscles and not the movements. Um, also too, it can ruin your workout flow if all the machines are taken and normally you come in and you do leg press first, you do a lat pull down second, and you finish off with a core machine that works your twisting muscles. Guess what? If all those machines are taken, you might be scratching your head thinking, what am I gonna do? So kind of knowing a few different exercises is a really good idea. So you can kind of fill that time appropriately, uh, assuming you do have a finite amount of time. If you have an infinite amount of time, if it's a Saturday and you don't care, uh, you can just sit there and do it. But just something to consider. Um, and also one of the other cons with uh, machines is that not all of them are the same. Not all of them are the same. So you may go to one gym, do a lat pull down machine, and it says 50 pounds on it. Great. You go to another gym, and it says 50 pounds on the weight for that lat pull down. And then guess what? Neither of them are the same. Neither of them are the same. One's way harder than the other. One's way easier than the other. So what do you do? What do you do? This is just something to note. Uh, basically, every machine uh, is not alike. No two machines are alike. So if you do run into this situation, I would just recommend trying to match the same repetitions that you're normally trying to get with whatever load you're gonna get. So if you're doing 50 pounds and you normally do it for 10 on one machine and you go to another place and it says it's 50 pounds, but you can only do eight, try to bump it down to 40 pounds, still find that same volume for yourself. It doesn't particularly matter. So um, those give you a, hopefully a few good ideas if you are a beginner and starting out in the gym, uh, which ones you should do for yourself. And the next portion of this that I wanted to talk about is cardio and weights. Cardio and weights. So a common question, uh, common question that I often get asked is, should I do cardio before or after weights? And it's a really good question. It's a really good question. Um, so. Basically, I like to try to make this as easy as possible on people and just go back to what your goals are. What are your goals? Do you wanna get better at endurance or do you wanna get better at strength? So the case for doing cardio before weights is somebody who's trying to prioritize their endurance training. They're trying to prioritize their overall cardiovascular work. Maybe this is somebody who's trying to get a better 5K time, they're training for a marathon, since most of your energy and effort is focused on that, I would highly recommend to do that first because that's where you want to exceed the most. Um, also, another 
uh, time where you might want to do your cardio before is if you never do cardio after. <laughs> this is really, really common in myself. I will do cardio sometimes, especially intense cardio, before my workouts, uh, before my weight workouts, I should say, because I don't want to do anything after my weight workouts. I just want to leave. So I kind of rip the bandaid off, get it done. Uh, even though it might not uh, be the best for my strength workout, it'll take a little bit away from it. I hedged the fact that I wasn't gonna do cardio afterwards anyway to kind of uh, justify that reasoning. Also, some people just like enjoy doing it before uh, as a kind of way to ease themselves into the workout, especially if you're just doing some light walking or light elliptical running. Uh, it could be a good reason to do cardio before your weights. The case for doing cardio after is if you are trying to prioritize strength and hypertrophy. If you're trying to get the most out of your strength routine, if you're trying to get the most out of building muscle, I would highly recommend to do your strength workout first. Do the cardio after because sometimes doing this cardio will take away some of the energy you have for the strength workout. Not always. It doesn't really inhibit muscle growth, but again, at the same time, if you're taking away a little bit of uh, overall energy, then of course that can take away from the workout itself. So pretty simple when you boil it down to it, it's just going to be um, what are your current goals? What are your overall priorities? And um, what are you trying to get out of your workout routine right now? So in addition to this, we can move into another question and this is along the lines of having neuropathy in your feet when walking or just exercising in general. And the first thing I would recommend doing if you do have neuropathy um, or just pain in your foot, you might not know it's neuropathy, is to consult a doctor because you might actually find out that it is neuropathy. Um, so this could be from diabetes, it could be from a lot of different things, maybe even just aging, but um, getting consulted with your doctor is incredibly crucial for a start if it is debilitating that bad. They might refer you to a podiatrist, which could get you some special footing, but unfortunately there could be some permanent damage in your feet if you don't um, kind of pay attention to this and try to get it settled. Um, another thing that sometimes people can do before walking exercises or before any type of weight workouts um, that might be using their feet, for example, is to just do some light movement beforehand. This can increase circulation, get some good blood flow through that area, which can help to uh, ease some of that pain in your uh, feet. Another thing too, kind of an elephant in the room, the less you weigh, the less pressure that are gonna be on your feet. So if you do have foot pain in your, uh, well, feet of course, you might just need to lose a little bit of weight because the less weight you have, the less pressure it's putting down on your foot, the less pressure it's gonna be putting down on your nerves. And of course, weight loss has a lot of other benefits too, but it could help specifically uh, with this neuropathy foot pain. And also look at other forms of exercise. There's so many different things out there you could do. You could do biking, swimming, rowing. Uphill walking is a great one if you still like walking. Uphill walking won't put as much pressure on your feet, especially compared to downhill walking. Um, resistance training, especially with machines. There's a lot of things you can do where you're not putting any pressure on your feet. And then of course, doing some chair exercise routines. I teach a lot of seniors and individuals with disabilities um, in chair exercise classes sometimes. So uh, this is a great way to kind of ease some of that foot pressure off your pain. And of course, there's lots of other things out there. You'll kind of have to find what aggravates your foot the most, um, but that is that. So um, in addition to that, we can also talk about exercising when busy. So how do we start exercise when busy? And the first thing I would highly recommend for you to do if you are starting um, an exercise routine is to look at your schedule. Find the open days versus busy days because those open days are going to be your real estate, the time where you are able to ultimately stick to that routine and actually get your workout in. So you don't wanna be scheduling workouts in on the days you know are gonna be busy, the days you have a lot of obligations. That should be a duh, but not sometimes people think this way. On top of that, define the minimum amount of work that you can do. Um, and when I say a minimum amount of work, I'm meaning the minimum amount of exercises or things that you wanna do in your exercise routine every single week. 
So maybe right now the minimum amount you can do is one weight training session a week. And if that's all you can do, that's fine. Do not try to add more onto it when you first start. Literally just try to get a little bit, okay? We're trying to build momentum here. So when you're busy and you're trying to start with exercise, find the minimum amount of workouts you can do. Maybe it's only 30 minutes of walking once or twice a week. Maybe it's twice or three times a week of resistance training. Find your minimum. And then also too, find exercises and routines that are enjoyable and sustainable for you because if they're not enjoyable or sustainable, you're not gonna stick with them for a very, very long time, of course. And then especially when you get tired and your schedule gets even busier, potentially in the long term, you're really not gonna stick with it. So those are a good first um, few points. And then just adding that into your schedule, literally writing it in, Monday and Wednesday, 30 minute walk before work, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm gonna do a 45 minute weight training session before work. Um, that's a very, very easy way because you're literally writing it down. You're telling yourself, I am going to do this. And if you've enjoyed these tips so far, please consider liking the video. I'd greatly appreciate it. And then in addition to that, um, we need to recognize some barriers that might actually come from your exercise routine. So when you're busy, obviously being busy is one of the biggest barriers, but there could also be some other hidden barriers that might come on top of this. So uh, maybe you have friends that always wanna party after you uh, go to work. So instead of getting your walk in after a workout, they always wanna go to party. They always wanna go to the bar and drink. That's a huge barrier and something you need to kind of work through in your life. Maybe there's upcoming deadlines. It's quarter one or quarter two and you have so many different things you need to do for your job. This is a barrier. This is a huge barrier because you might be super stressed out um, and don't feel like you can do anything in your normal workouts, but if you stick to that minimum that we talked about earlier and just ride that out, uh, you'll realize that you know that barrier, all the deadlines, you've kind of accounted for this already because you're doing the minimum amount you can do even when life gets tough. Uh, maybe another barrier for you is you always forget to pack your clothes, some extra food, or even your headphones when you're going out. Uh, this is something that happens with a lot of people. So just telling yourself, I'm going to plan ahead. I'm going to take five minutes tonight before I go to bed to plan out all my different things. So I'm able to, uh, get all my stuff I need for my workout before I actually go out. And then of course, this is probably one of the biggest ones, a huge barrier for you especially if you're busy, I'm guessing you're very, very in tune to your career. You just might be too tired. You just might be too tired. So kind of looking at ways, how can I uh, maybe not be as tired after work? Maybe when can I do exercise that won't conflict with my work? Um, all of these are things that you should consider when trying to um, start exercise when busy. And then some quick tips too, that I think can be used um, sometimes, but also just in a pish, make it more pleasurable. So maybe your normal workouts, you do a really long, tedious 30 minute run. That's what you're gonna do uh, two to three times a week. Maybe today you just make it a little bit more pleasurable and you do uh, a run that's not quite as intense. Or maybe you do um, a run where you're listening to music or going out for a run instead of just running on the treadmill. Finding ways to make your exercise routine more pleasurable will increase adherence. In addition to this, adding friends to it can offer some accountability that you might not have otherwise. So that's a really good thing to uh, have, of course, when you're busy, because, you know, I'm not going to let my friend down. You know, even though I'm tired right now, I'm going to go work out with my friend uh, because I'm getting some socialization. I'm excited to see them. I'm excited to talk about my day at work. But of course, you're just getting the exercise in too. And I think any type of thing that isn't uh, the most fun, kind of like exercise at times, uh, if you do it with a friend, that's gonna make it way, way, way more enjoyable. Also, you can multitask too. This is something that I do occasionally. So um, I will walk on a treadmill and I will do phone calls or I will walk on a treadmill and I will eat a small snack. Multitasking anytime when it comes to exercise, especially when you're busy is very crucial. So uh, maybe you're somebody who works from home is very, very busy and all you can do right now is let's say uh, a 10 minute workout downstairs. That's great. 
take your 10 minute break, go downstairs, do your workout. Maybe you'll do a little bit later. You know, trying to multitask and doing your best in that regard will really, really help you long term to build some consistency. Planning the night before and all these things are just different ways to be more consistent different ways to be more consistent and at the end of the day that's what we're trying to do we're trying to be consistent with our health goals our health routines we're not doing anything crazy that we can't sustain for a very long time uh, before we of course can add some complexity to that so uh, the next question I get asked uh, every once in a while is is it better to work out with or without a partner you know should I work out alone or should I add somebody and the first thing I want to say is it really depends on yourself as an individual. So we'll talk about the case for working out with a partner. Um, working out with a partner can be great because of accountability. So um, maybe you're really notoriously bad at exercising and your partner isn't. So you say to your partner, hey, I want you to text me every single day and ask me how my diet's doing or ask me if I've worked out. Um, or text me, hey, it's time to work out, let's do this. Sometimes that accountability is what people really need to stick to a exercise plan long term. So accountability is a great aspect of it. Also too, if your uh, partner that you're working out with is very knowledgeable in fitness and health and nutrition, maybe they're even a coach, uh, they can catch errors in your form. Uh, they can see different little things of, oh, hey, you know, you're squatting this way. You might want to try it this way. It's going to help a little bit, uh, work your muscle and strength a little bit better. Uh, of course, on top of this, they can give you that motivation during the workout. I don't know how many times I've been doing a certain type of workout and I just need um, somebody near me to pet me up or, you know, slap me on the back or just tell me some motivating words. And uh, this can get you into the good frame of mind and a good mindset to hopefully allow you to uh, hit whatever part of the workout you're doing. So maybe it's a really heavy exercise, maybe uh, you just don't wanna go at all and you just need somebody to say to you, hey, you can do this, today sucks, that's okay, we're gonna get a workout in, boom, done. Uh, that's a really good way, uh, kind of going back to accountability that a partner can help out. Also, of course, social time. We know mental health is incredibly crucial um, and especially mental and emotional health, all of those things are intertwined. So this can be a great way for you to get a little bit of, of that social time that you might not normally get in your normal day-to-day -day life, especially if you work from home or if you don't have a lot of friends at the office. Um, say you're not really friends with your coworkers, which, you know, hopefully you got a job that you are, but sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't. Um, also too, Usually when you're working out with a friend, it provides a scheduled time for you specifically to work out. So usually it's gonna be, hey, we're working out at 2 p.m. I'll meet you there. Great, great. So kind of adding back into how we make exercise easier, scheduling it into your life is uh, one of the ways to do it. And of course, when we have a partner who's basically doing it for us, that makes it even easier. Now we can move on to the case of lifting alone. I myself lift alone probably 90% of my workouts. Basically all of my workouts I lift alone. Um, a reason why you might wanna lift alone is because your gym time is limited and you lose focus easily. So I know myself and when I go to the gym, I want to just get my workout in. I do sometimes like socializing, so I do do that, but most of the time I just wanna get in, I wanna get out and just be done with it. And if I go to the gym, especially with a partner, I usually get off track very quickly. Uh, my gym time usually is kind of limited, or at least I try to. I don't want to be there for three hours, and I know if I do go with people um, and I don't have a limited amount of time, that's going to cause issues for my other obligations later in the day. Uh, so if you are very, very busy, it's probably a little bit wiser maybe to go on your own. Um, also too, I really enjoy the alone time of being able to just lift by myself. I'm naturally introverted, so I think this is part of the reason why my personality just fits working out alone by myself, but something to consider for yourself. If you are always doing stuff for other people, you have family, kids, a job where you're talking to a bunch of people, going to the gym by yourself can be some great crucial alone time and decompressed time that you might ultimately need for yourself. And of course, um, you can literally do whatever, whenever, 
if I go to the gym and I'm supposed to hit maybe bench press with one of my friends, but I don't want to bench press that day, guess what? If I work out by myself, I don't have to. <laughs> I can do anything. I can even just decide not to go to the gym. So although this might lead to some issues where um, maybe you won't be as adherent, if you normally are adherent with the gym, it can go no problem. It can give you that flexibility and peace of mind saying, I'm gonna go do whatever I want this day. And I don't have to worry about letting my uh, partner or my uh, trainer down that I'm working with. Um, and then another thing too that probably doesn't get talked a lot about is that I just don't like being watched. I don't really like having people with me or looking at me when I'm working out. Not because I'm self-conscious, I just have never been like that. I I love coaching people in movement, but I don't like getting coached. <laughs> so kind of a little bit of insecurity there, but again, just another case for lifting alone for yourself. It'll kind of depend on your own specific uh, goals and what you want for yourself and just what works out the best for you. And then uh, another question I wanted to tie in here, because I think this is kind of a fun one, is I only have $25 for home gym equipment. What in the world should I buy? What in the world should I buy? So for starters, um, there's a lot of things you can buy out there. Uh, there's also no reason that you technically do need to buy anything, but if you do wanna buy something to kind of level up your home gym equipment, I would say a dumbbell is probably one of the best things. And you're not probably gonna be able to get the highest quality dumbbell. You're not gonna be able to get uh, the heaviest of dumbbell, but you can probably get one dumbbell and I'm gonna link a couple of these down below in the description, um, but you can get one dumbbell and you can do endless exercises with this. You can do endless exercises with this. You can pair this with body weight exercises, so that adds more exercises you can do, of course. Dumbbells are easier to transport. They're very easy to store in your home. You can take them anywhere, and especially if you have one single dumbbell, man, that's a great tool for you to use. Um, and then, Another thing I'm gonna to recommend too is if you do end up wanting to over time, you can get some adjustable dumbbells. Um, and also too, maybe you have a little bit of extra money. Adjustable dumbbells are great because um, the price per pound is incredibly cheap. So if you think about an adjustable dumbbell set of 25 pounds, you might have a 25 pound dumbbell, a 21 pound dumbbell, a tw or an 18 pound dumbbell, so on and so forth. So you're literally going to have so many different weight sets that the price per pound is going to be very, very low. The upfront cost is gonna be a little bit higher than say if you just got a 25 pound dumbbell versus a 25 pound adjustable dumbbell set. But if you're looking for the most bang for your buck, man, adjustable dumbbell set is the way to go. But if you only have literally $25, I would try to get the heaviest dumbbell, heaviest single dumbbell you can with just that 25 bucks um, because that's gonna get you the most, uh, the most out of it. And really, I wouldn't waste your money on anything else. Um, maybe some resistance bands if you got a little bit more, but even those, they're not, you need to get some pretty heavy resistance bands overall. Another reason too I like the adjustable dumbbells if you got a little bit of extra money is you can progress to harder exercises as well. So. Um, Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm gonna link down below a couple adjustable dumbbells. We're all finished for the day. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.